North Tested Knives, another review in the Yukon Territory. This is the Fisker's Splitting Axe, 17 inch model, the X11 I guess is the model number. The description, you get one, you get more one strike splits with perfect balance of power speed and accuracy. So it's not a perfect felling axe because it's got a pretty wide head and it has a built-in wedge to help with splitting. Obviously it's why it's, splitting, why it's a splitting axe. And this fits nicely in a small pack even with the sheath that comes on it. It still fits in a small pack. You can mount it on the side of a boat, an ATV, put it in the back of your truck, things like that. It's very very portable. That's one reason why I think it's a great tool to have. And this usually runs about 60 to 70 dollars depending where you find it at Canadian Tire or whatnot. Uh, the handle is extremely comfortable. I think I'm gonna redo my paracord wrap job and put it near more near the top of the handle because the orange rubber coating that's on the bottom of the handle is extremely comfortable and I feel like I lost that by putting paracord over it so I'm just gonna move the paracord up the handle a bit more to have more comfort. It has a generous lanyard hole which is extremely useful. It's got a hammering back end. The sheath that it comes with has a safety latch, that's the orange knob you see, and it even has a handle so you could carry it easier. All the weight of this axe is in the head, literally. Like the handle weighs pretty much nothing, which makes it a little bit more efficient of a chopper than regular axes, depending on if you can find if I can find a similar axe, say in from Condor or Hulta Force, I would like to do a side-by-side -side comparison for sure. The steel would definitely be much more high quality on the Hulta Force, Grandsfrost Brooks, Condor, and stuff like that. Maybe even the Cold Steel Trail Boss. I'd like to do another side-by-side -side competition between axes like those. I like the idea of a synthetic handled hatchet or axe like this because it's pretty much impossible to break. But if it does break, just like a metal handed axe, you're pretty much fucked. Sorry, pretty much screwed. Um, I usually do prefer traditional wooden handled axes because at least if that breaks on you, you could at least carve a new handle if you're in a pinch. Whereas with these polymer and steel handled ones, you're pretty much screwed and you have to buy a new one essentially. I felt this was chopping extremely well. I know if this was a tree that was completely on the ground or standing up and it wasn't bouncing around like this, I would probably be done by now. But I just wanted to see how efficient the bite of the axe was just going into here. It was making extremely large chunks. Here I'm just whacking the back of the axe head, seeing if it would bend or anything like that, and no, nothing happened at all. It came pretty sharp, which was nice. Uh, the steel, I'm not too sure exactly what this steel is. I just know it's some um, basic uh, forged. It looks like it's pretty much uh, high carbon steel that's been cast almost into the shape of the head and then probably hammer forged finished with some grinding and then dipped in a very heavy duty coating because none, none, the coating isn't coming off at all. So, so far I really like this axe. It only weighs 2.4 pounds, which is really nice. It's not too heavy, it's not too big, it's not too small. It's not a carving axe or a carpenter's axe, but you know, it's enough that if you're in a pinch and this is all you had, you could carve, you, you could get the job done, you could carve some traps with it for sure. So it says here, it's their, for the material and the handle, it's their unbreakable permahead. Insert molded head will not loosen or prevent overstrike breakage. It's got shock absorbing kyber comp, fiber comp handle rather. It's lightweight yet strong, stronger than steel to prevent over, overstrike damage. It's designed by Bill Nas, Finland, building on a 360 year, year old history of the world's best forging tools. It's got a non-stick blade coating powder, so it's a powder coated blade. 
Hardened forged steel blades stay sharp longer than traditional axes. Well, let, let's see how this keeps up, see if that's true or not. I'm just reading from the website here, seeing if there's any other information on the type of steel, but I uh, haven't found anything too specific yet. So, I chopped that tree pretty good. I found some smaller logs that have been previously cut on the floor, forest floor. And it just blasted through them, no problem. So if you could, for this size axe, two and a half pounds of the head and 17 inch long handle. And if you can find pieces of wood that are about six inches in diameter or smaller, that would be pretty much perfect. And I do feel confident that if you had a, a good base, that it could definitely take on large The one thing I really like about this hatchet, about this axe, is the hollow handle. This is a great idea, as you could take, make this into a miniature survival kit. So say, this is my EDC Altoids tin, and just throwing in a few supplies from there just to see what can fit in. So a one-handed wheel spark to wheel, wheel fire starter, uh, the large uh, Bic lighters get stuck if you put it in the handle. So if you're going to throw in a big lighter, make sure it's one or two of the smaller ones. Uh, a few water tabs, some Vaseline soaked cotton balls, uh, a space blanket if you can roll it up long and skinny ways, as tight as you can, will fit great. I got a miniature fishing kit in there. Uh, you could put in a lot more fishing string, regular string, uh, and a tops ferro, ferro rod and this is the light my fire ferro rod if you put the striker in first and then you do the ferro rod the green part of the ferro rod the plastic actually ends up being like a little bit of a cap and will keep everything inside from falling out and then I like to keep a little bit of that string hanging outside so that way I can just pull on it and then I have my fire starter ready. And then I would grab, to finish this off, I would just grab some duct tape and cover it up and wrap, wrap that on the butt end of the handle to stop everything else from falling out. Even got a little slip of uh, duct tape in there as well. All right, have a good one, guys.